How's it guys? In today's video we are having a look at this. It's Makita's cold cutting chop saw. It's the LC1230N and uh, we're going to unbox it, we're going to have a look at it, talk about some of its specs and features, look at the overview, build quality, do a few demo cuts and a whole lot of other good stuff. It's going to be great. Don't get me wrong, I really like my Devolt products. Um, there's a whole lot of them there. There's like 14 other power tools that I've got and we've got one Makita tool here. Um, I chose the Makita chop saw over the Devolt chop saw for a specific reason. We'll talk about that later on in the video, so stick around. Also, if you guys are interested in seeing a teardown of this machine, uh, we, we can tear it down, have a look inside to see just how well it's made. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. If it gets 100 likes, I'll tear this thing down. Also, leave us a comment. It's always nice to hear from you guys. Well, welcome back to the Burden Builds Garage. Let's get started. So big thanks to Strand Hardware here in Port Elizabeth. Um, I picked this machine up from them. And uh, as I said, thanks to you guys, uh, you do know how you helped me out. Uh, although full disclosure, I did pay full price with my own money for this machine. So um, just guys keep that in mind. Um, the review isn't influenced by, by anything, should I say. Uh, and let's, let's have a look at what we get in the box. Now, just a standard old box. I suppose nothing too fancy and I believe we're just going to get the saw in this box. It's boxed up pretty much the same as a lot of the other products are, just with a bit of packaging inside and um, a user manual I believe and well, <laughs> actually looks like you get a pair of safety glasses or goggles. Uh, uh, looks like there is a user manual stuck in the side. As for the machine, look, this thing is pretty heavy now. Uh, if, I, if I remember correctly, it's about 20 kilograms. Oh. And there we go. That is the machine. Well, that's the left-hand side of the machine, I suppose. And the right-hand side over there. Business end, I must say, it does look a whole lot better uh, than the, uh, what do you call it, the abrasive chop saw. Now, I have had the abrasive chop saw version of this. I think it's the LW1401. I took that back and swapped it for this. We'll talk about that later. Um, but overall, first impressions is that this is a real serious, solid piece of equipment. Now, before we actually look at the machine, I just want to open up these safety goggles that you get with your, with your chop saw. Um, this is just like sort of a standard pair of little safety glasses. Just remember to always wear protective equipment with these things. They are quite dangerous if you don't use them correctly. Average little goggle, it says ANSR Z87 Plus. Now that's gonna be the rating of the goggle. And then also the Makita um, user or instruction manual. So the right thing to do here is to go and read this thing before you use your machine. Of course, we'll do that. And then a quick overview of the machine. So for those of you who aren't familiar with these things, although the reason you're probably watching this video is because you're looking at picking up one of these. By the way, link in the description. Um, it is an Amazon affiliate link, so uh, I, make, I do make something small from it. It doesn't cost you guys any more, but it does help support the channel. It helps support me so that I can continue bringing these uh, videos to you. It's just a chop saw, really, so it's for cutting uh, off raw stock, I suppose. Uh, the first bit and the business end is the blade. We've got a Tungsten carbide tooth blade. Yeah, I believe this is a 60 tooth blade. Your stock in over here and then you'll chop it off. So we can also see that uh, the, ga the guard, the blade guard automatically uh, moves itself out of the way like most other machines do when you're going to cut. Um, also, uh, what I did want to mention about this specific saw is uh, a lot of the other saws that sometimes you see um, I mean, they can be fairly well made and they, um, they probably are of quality, uh, but what's common with a lot of them is that the frame, the bottom of the base plate, is a pressed steel tin base plate, so they're not as rigid as this. Now, this is cast aluminium. This base plate is really, really solid thick. It's got absolutely no give in it. It is really, really thick. We'll have a closer look at that later. And that's actually one of the reasons why I took um, the old model, the abrasive saw back, the LW1401, also by Makita. Um, 
I really wasn't happy with the quality of the base plate. And looking at it from the other side, we've got a, sort of a tool. This is for our blade change. It's quite nice that it actually clips into place so that it can stay on your machine. You'll never lose it. Um, also, another one of the features here, we've got our work piece or our stock clamp. Now you can clamp uh, 90 degrees and all the way up to 45 degrees. Another nice feature about this is it's toolless. So it's got this lever which you slide out. You can loosen by pulling it. Now this thing's quite tight. There we go. Pull it and then you can change your angle. You can set it to whatever you want to inside here. There is a 0 to 45 degree marking and then when you finish with it, you tighten it up again, push the lever in and you're ready to cut. Overall, the casing uh, looks pretty sturdy. Uh, we'll have a look at uh, what material it's made out of at a later stage, maybe in a teardown video to see how good it is. But it feels like a really rigid type of plastic. The finishings are very good on it. I must say the castings seem pretty damn good as well. Um, it is sprayed uh, aluminium, so it's been painted. Uh, it probably will get scratched up over time, so that, but that's not a problem as long as it carries on working correctly. Also, we've got a little bit of a return spring here. This, is, this little bolt here is for our cutting depth. It's a stop so that we can get to a certain depth and then the machine bottoms out and the blade doesn't go any lower. It's also got a lock off feature. So a lot of the, the chop saws and a lot of products actually have this as a safety feature. Uh, in order to start the machine, you've actually got to press this little button in on the top and then you can only Pull the trigger. If you don't press this in, it's locked in the off position. As I mentioned before, that's for safety. Having a look on the other side, well, first of all, two and a half meter power cord, really happy about that. I think I may have mentioned that already. And at the back here, uh, we've got a chip tray. It's a little steel tray now uh, with a little rubber handle here. So what is supposed to happen is when we are cutting, the chips are flung backwards and into this little tray and they collect here. Although don't be fooled, it's not going to collect everything. You are still going to get a bit of spray out the left and the right hand side. Although nowhere near the mess of a comparative abrasive saw. Also, uh, like most other chop saws, it's got a quick release function. So uh, if, you, if you just move this little lever to the left or anti-clockwise, counterclockwise, you can pull the locking vice or the locking mechanism out and then you can put your piece of stock in and you're ready to lock it up. You turn it over clockwise and then you just spin the wheel, tighten it and you're good to go. Talking about some of the advantages of the cold cut chop saws over the abrasive chop saws. Uh, first up is the rate at which your work is done. Um, these cold cut chop saws tend to cut through material quite a lot faster than the abrasive saws. So that's great if you're in a production type of environment. Also, uh, they are somewhat more quiet than the abrasive saws, although it's more of a different type of sound. They are nowhere near as quiet as something like a bandsaw. Um, and I have heard of guys actually taking these apart and repacking the gearbox with a different type of grease, and then the, the chop saw actually gets noticeably quieter. Uh, but it's, it's still a fa fairly noisy thing. You're not going to be using this in a library. Uh, another one of the big factors for me, now this is a huge advantage for me and for you guys that are in a small workshop, um, is dust control. So with an abrasive chop saw cutting disc angle grinders, you guys will know this, um, as the blade wears it turns into a dust and it turns your metal or the bit that it's cutting into a metal powder and that kind of floats around all over the garage, settles on everything. Now these chop saws work on a different principle where it actually cuts out a little piece of metal, it deposits it down into the box or probably on your table, uh, but there's no dust that floats around. So um, it's a lot more conducive to using in a small workshop. Another fairly big advantage to these cold cut saws, comparing them to the abrasive saws, is that these are a fair amount more accurate when cutting. Although, do keep this in mind, it depends on the brand that you buy. I wouldn't expect a super accurate cut from, say, a $200 cold cut saw. Uh, although, I do expect, I believe this is somewhere in the region of about $600, about 10,000 Rand. Um, and I do expect this thing to be pretty accurate. Also, um, with the accuracy, that comes from the type of blade being used. And that leads me on to the next thing, which is the cold cutting. And that's why they're called cold cutting saws. Um, your workpiece, as you cut through it, doesn't actually heat up at all. Uh, the heat generated from the cutting is actually transferred into the chip. And then the chip is pulled away or passed away 
uh, from your stock that you're cutting. And if we compare that to an abrasive saw, uh, where, when you're cutting with an abrasive saw, the heat is actually transferred into the stock that you are cutting. So as an example, if you are cutting stainless steel, then you can actually work hard on that stainless steel. Uh, not so much with these types of saws. Also, another big thing is the burrs. Where if, you, if any of you guys uh, have ever used an abrasive saw or an angle grinder, you know that it leaves really sharp burrs. And these cold cut saws generally leave no burrs, although that does depend on the blade that you're using and uh, if you are cutting as recommended. But overall, pretty much no burr to talk about. And the last two things I wanted to talk about comparing these cold cut saws to the abrasive saws is the blade's diameter. Now, as you use an abrasive saw, that blade wears down as you cut your material and that moves the contact point of the blade to uh, your clamp. Especially when you're cutting at 45 degrees, that can be quite problematic. Not so with this type of saw, we can see it uses um, a toothed blade. So the diameter of this blade, it doesn't change as the blade wears. It's only the teeth that become dull. Also, you can have these teeth uh, sharpened. Now, I believe they come in uh, HSS blades, um, high-speed steel blades, or TCT, tungsten carbide tip blades. Or if you're not comfortable with having them sharpened uh, professionally, of course, uh, you can just, I suppose, buy yourself a new blade. I think blades range from like $100 to $200, depending on what you're buying. Uh, that said, uh, these types of blades, again, comparing it to the abrasive uh, cutting blades, these last a lot longer. So your initial cost of uh, your capital outlay of buying one of these machines is quite a lot, but I've heard of guys getting two to 3,000 cuts out of a single blade, uh, comparing that to maybe 50 or 80 cuts out of an abrasive blade. Now, of course, that depends on the material that you are cutting through, the hardness of it and uh, the thickness of it, but overall, that is the general consensus is that these blades are a lot more efficient uh, when it comes to cutting. Now, why did I choose the Makita over the DeVault DW872? There's a specific reason for that and a story behind it. I originally purchased the Makita LW1401 abrasive uh, chop saw. That was working great. I went through about one blade, although towards the end of the blade, I noticed the cuts were actually skew. So um, I ended up having to grind a lot of them with the belt grinder. Again, if you missed that video, there will be a link in the description where we built our own uh, two by 48 inch belt grinder. But I was truing up each of the cuts on that thing. And I thought, no man, hang on, this is, this is actually rubbish. So I put a square up against uh, the LW1401 uh, abrasive chop saw and the blade was skew. Now I'm not talking about one millimeter, I'm talking about like four, about four to five millimeters. And in my books, that is not close enough. That is not the quality that I expect from a Makita product. So what I ended up doing is um, taking it back to Strand. They were wonderful. They said, bring it back. They'll chat to Makita. Makita had a look at it and they, Makita agreed 100% uh, this Saw is not up to spec, I need to be replaced with a new one. So I thought, uh, let me just see if I can pay in a little bit more and pick up the cold cut saw, which is exactly what I did. Although I did look uh, before I actually paid for this, um, I wanted to compare it to the DeVault. And there were two big things that stood out for me. One of them is the blade guard. Now this blade guard is steel. On the DeVault, it is plastic uh, or polycarbonate, should I say, I, I believe it's polycarbonate. But the very big thing that sealed the deal for me, and I have mentioned this before in the video earlier, is the base. This base on this Makita is cast aluminum. It is solid. There is absolutely no give on it, no flex, no nothing. Comparing that to the chop saw, the DeVault, uh, the DeVault cold cut chop saw, that still has a pressed steel tin base. And uh, after the experience that I had, I just want to stay clear of those. I'd rather pay a little bit extra for a higher quality product, specifically the Makita in this case. Although, remember, I am still a DeVault fanboy. <laughs> Maybe things will change as, as time goes by. Uh, also, another thing to keep in mind is that this is a 12-inch blade compared to the DeVault's 14-inch blade. So these 12-inch blades, I believe, are a little bit more convenient to get, and they are also slightly cheaper. You know, I'm not cutting really big tube or stock, so I don't need that extra two inches of cut.
So after a couple of hours of testing, I've got some feedback for you guys. Before we get to that feedback though, uh, looking at the samples that we just cut, uh, the cut quality of those samples is pretty damn good. It is nice and smooth. Now you can still see some teeth marks in it, but that's not a problem, it is smooth. And the cuts are consistently square. Although do remember before you start cutting, just check that your clamp is set perfectly square to the blade uh, before you're actually expecting a square cut. Well, the cold cutting, 100%, it is a cold cutting saw. You can pick up the piece immediately after it's been cut. And I wouldn't say it's any warmer than room temperature. And for the burrs, there are no burrs. There might be a very, very slight or small burr uh, on some pieces that you cut, but it is absolutely nothing compared to an abrasive chop saw. So this morning I made 246 cuts. Here's the raw stock that I processed. It is a 12 by 12 solid square mild steel bar and some 20 by five millimeter solid flat bar. It cut it like nothing. Um, I must say if the blade carries on cutting like this for a couple more hundred, hopefully thousand cuts, I will be a really, really happy camper. It took about an hour and a half to process all of this material. Super happy about that. It's a lot faster than cutting with an abrasive cutting saw. And also I can confirm there is absolutely no dust, although there is the odd uh, metal chip that gets flung around, so don't go cutting near your wife's beautiful white furniture, or you're probably going to be spending a whole lot more time in the garage overnight. I would also love to have cut up a whole lot of stainless steel stock, just to show you guys how well the saw cuts and how capable the saw is. However, I don't have a blade that is able to cut stainless steel. so. Here's a thought, maybe you guys over at Strand Hardware or even Makita are willing to send us over, donate us a blade for cutting stainless steel. I'll pop it onto the saw, cut up a whole lot of stock for you guys, show you how well it works. So my thoughts overall, this is a far superior cutting tool compared to an abrasive chop saw. Now, I know what you guys are thinking and the answer is no. You cannot put one of these uh, blades onto your abrasive chop saw. It spins way too fast. Just don't try it, it's dangerous. Um, that said, I was trying to figure out how to explain uh, what it feels like to cut with a saw. And, and if you ever, guys have ever used a mitre saw to cut maybe through a piece of timber, a piece of wood, uh, it kind of feels like that. But in this case, you are actually cutting through solid steel. It is super impressive. Now, I do realize that these saws are quite expensive, about double the cost of an abrasive cutting saw, um, about 600 to $650, depending on where you're buying it from, 10,000 uh, South African Rand. Um, but in my books, it's definitely worth the wait. Save up for a couple of extra months, you won't regret it. Now, um, if you don't believe me, there's also many other reviews on uh, the interweb. So I have put a link in the description. It's an Amazon link. They've got pretty good reviews. Uh, go click on that, read the reviews about the saw, and maybe that'll settle your mind and you'll be ready to buy it. I hope you guys enjoyed the review and unboxing. I definitely enjoyed making it for you. If you did, hit the thumbs up button and let's see if we can get YouTube to share the video far and wide. My name is Grant Burton. This is the Burton Bills Garage and you'll see me next time. Cheers.